Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lieutenant Rick Detrican with the NOAA Commission Officer Corps. I'm an aircraft commander and instructor pilot on the NOAA King Air, which is right behind us right now. It's a 350 CER variant, so it has the cargo door addition as well as the extended range tanks for our, our missions. Let me go a little uh, brief overview of the plane. Uh, it has two Pratt & Whitney PT-6-60 Alpha engines. They produce 1050 shaft horsepower each. They have four bladed props along with the, again, the extended range tanks, which gives us about 5,200 pounds of fuel. Uh, that can give us seven to eight hours of survey time. If um, fully pressurized, uh, retractable tricycle landing gear. It has the beefed up landing gear for the heavier weights. We typically take off in the 15 to 16,000 pound range. Our max takeoff weight being 16,000 to pounds. Like I said, we can take quite a bit of fuel. Uh, there's actually six different fuel tanks on the plane. Uh, the outboard main tanks, the inboard auxiliary tanks, and then the extended range tanks, which if any of you are familiar with King Airs, sit in the back of the, of the cell there. So we can't carry any golf clubs. Uh, basically that's all taken up by fuel now. Uh, some other cool things about the King Air are the winglets on the outside for aerodynamic purposes. Uh, there's also, it's a very low wing, uh, pretty slim design. And like I mentioned, it is the cargo variant. So we have a large cargo door. And that just helps unloading and loading and uh, setting up the mission equipment in the back. And it also has a normal air stir door for normal ingress and egress. But the cargo door is super, super helpful during, uh, during a mission if the outfitting as well. Uh, typical crew for us is two pilots up front. Uh, we run an aircraft commander and a, a co-pilot or a pilot monitor. And in the back, we run either one or two survey operators. They're primarily responsible for starting the mission equipment, starting the cameras going, uh, looking at our, the quality of our photos, as well as the tasking at hand for the day. So they are instrumental and we'll fly with either one or two of them in the back. And depending on the mission, we'll also fly with another survey operator on the ground to, to help speed up that data processing so we can get it get it out as quick as possible. So typical complements, three to four people. And two cameras in the back. This is our typical setup for our coastal mapping and emergency response mission. They're fully gimbaled, uh, set up with camera ports with retractable FOD doors as well as optical grade glass that allows us to, to fly pressurized as well. The forward camera is an oblique camera, so they can shoot out the port and starboard sides. And the aft camera is an Nader camera, so it shoots, captures photos straight down. Now we can run them simultaneously or one at a time. So in typical emergency response fashion, we'll fly with both cameras firing shooting out both sides and straight down, getting a, a triple wide swap, which is pretty efficient and allows us to collect a, a ton of photos, even with just a single pass. As you can see, we, we've done that uh, on several different hurricanes and also with the most recent tornadoes in Nashville as well. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about the mission. Typical flight profiles for us are 1,500 feet to 10,500 feet, depending on the mission, whether it's coastal mapping, normal coastal erosion assessment, will typically fly up higher. Uh, better image quality. We can, the higher we go, we can get a little bit better image quality. But if it's an emergency response mission, we'll fly as low as 1,500 feet just to get below the clouds and be able to get those clear photos. In those uh, cases, it's essential to fly as slow as we can. Our typical survey speeds are 170 knots is the sweet spot. But as we get into those lower altitudes, uh, we'll try to slow down as much as possible. And our minimum indicated speeds are typically 135 uh, knots at that altitude. Uh, otherwise, we can pick a survey altitude in, in between those and the sweet spot again is gonna be 170 knots. Uh, we can capture different ports of interest, different uh, neighborhoods of interest, different coastlines, and we can really zoom or focus in on areas of damage. Our primary emergency response mission is to 
to the first responders after a storm comes by and fly straight to the area of max damage and survey as many many passes as we can. Uh, weather limiting, fuel limiting, traffic limiting, we'll, we'll capture photos for five, six, sometimes seven hours. And as soon as we land, the survey operator is passing that data on to a, a ground support personnel. And that data, those photos are passed up to the RSD, Remote Sensing Division, where it can be utilized by all of our different stakeholders for emergency response on scene or further on uh, support work down the road as, as that damage of the hurricane progresses. You can see uh, our two cameras here. They're both the Planex cameras and they are our typical outfit for, for, the, uh, for the mission. I've been in NOAA for eight years with the NOAA Commission Officer Corps. I went to a ship for two years, the NOAA ship Nancy Foster, and I had a blast uh, doing all sorts of different dive ops, small boat ops, survey ops, I loved it. But I found out about the aviation side of NOAA and I had to go see what that was about. So. Applied, got accepted, went to flight school, and I started flying the, the NOAA Twin Otters, which fly amazing missions, fantastic missions, but I found out about the King Air, and as pilots do, I, I wanted to fly another plane and see what that was all about as well. So I've been flying the King Air for two years now. It is a fantastic mission, combining coastal mapping, gravity, and emergency response, and the upcoming season, we're also gonna be flying snow survey as well. So a good mix of missions and a very satisfying mission when you're able to, to help out, get on scene after a storm, whether it's Hurricane Dorian or tornadoes in Nashville, capture some very useful data to the protection of personal life and property. Thanks everyone for joining us on the tour of the Noah Kinger. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the tour of Noah. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colin Conley from Ellicott City, Maryland. I commissioned out of the Naval Academy in 2009 with a degree in oceanography. I flew the Pete Ray Orion for the Navy for 10 years and transitioned to the NOAA Corps in October 2019. Here at NOAA, I'm an aviation safety officer and I fly the Beechcraft in Europe. Come on back, let's have a look inside. So here we are in the back of the King Air. The first thing you're gonna notice are these two big cameras right here. We have both an oblique and a nadir camera, which allow us to perform our primary mission sets. We take both pre and post event imagery. Pre-event imagery occurs prior to hurricane season every year. We fly the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, and around the U.S. territories in the Caribbean and collect imagery of the coastline. This imagery will serve as a baseline um, or a standard for comparison in case a hurricane or tropical storm rolls through. And then our post-event imagery, also known as emergency response imagery, will be collected and then we can make comparisons to see what's changed. This imagery is all publicly available online. Uh, that about covers our primary mission sets. So we can head up to the cockpit. Welcome to the cockpit. We typically fly these missions with three people on board. We have a pilot in either seat up front and a sensor operator who's controlling the camera in the back. Factors that affect this mission are sun angle and tide windows. The tide windows are important because how high the water is will affect the imagery that we're getting along the coastline. And sun angle is important because you don't want long shadows cast when you're trying to collect imagery of the coastline. Um, the left-hand pilot is flying off of an iPad that's showing them where to fly. So crew resource management is especially important here because the right side pilot is going to be monitoring your airspace, your traffic, uh, making all their radio calls, setting the nav aids, that sort of thing. So you want to make sure everyone's working in unison to keep the aircraft safe at all times. Uh, we typically fly around 5,500 feet um, lower if needed. We can't have any clouds below us, which um, is a pretty stringent requirement, but makes sense because the clouds will show up in all of the imagery. So that's often a limiting factor for us, but that's the basic gist of how we fly our coastal mapping missions. Thanks for joining me today for a tour of NOAA's Beechcraft King Air. Enjoy the rest of your tour of the Aircraft Operations Center.
This is the Noah King Air. It collects pre and post storm imagery like this from Mexico Beach, Florida, before and after Hurricane Michael. The United States has 95,000 miles of shoreline. These dynamic coastal regions are vulnerable to flooding, property destruction, and beach erosion from severe weather and sea level change. Coastal areas rely on accurate elevation data to plan and recover when hazardous situations arise. These communities depend on up-to-date information for their management and resiliency planning. As part of its mission, NOAA's National Geodetic Survey NGS provides an accurate, consistent, and current national shoreline. NGS's mean high water line is considered the nation's official shoreline. It is used to create and maintain NOAA nautical charts. These charts are used by commercial and recreational boaters to navigate safely and avoid potential hazards. NGS's shoreline is also a crucial source for defining our nation's boundaries and territorial limits. Remotely sensed data from aircraft is collected to map the shoreline. The use of aircraft-based sensors, such as a digital camera and topobathy LIDAR system, allows large areas to be surveyed in a short amount of time. LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, is a remote sensing method that uses a laser to measure distances to a surface. NGS uses a unique type of sensor called topobathy LIDAR. It collects wide swaths of elevation data on both land, or topography, and in shallow water areas, or bathymetry. Bathymetric data has historically been difficult to acquire in these highly dynamic coastal zones, since NOAA survey ships cannot travel safely close to the shoreline. NGS's topobathy LIDAR system uses a green laser that operates in a circular scan pattern to penetrate shallow water near the shore. The high-density point data is combined with GPS and other positional data to create precise 3D topographic and bathymetric elevation models. NGS uses coastal elevation data to map the mean high-water shoreline, which is a tidally referenced boundary. The shoreline is verified using aerial imagery that is collected along with the LIDAR data. Topobathy LIDAR data, collected by NGS, is freely available from NOAA's digital coast to use for applications and tools to support decision-making in the coastal zone. Academic and research organizations use coastal elevation LIDAR data to develop ocean and coastal models. These 3D models help researchers understand ocean circulation. Elevation data is an important part of the model because circulation is influenced by friction, which is related to the height of the seafloor. Coastal engineers and scientists use elevation data to understand sediment movement, beach erosion, and sediment budgets. This information is used to develop management plans to restore, monitor, and maintain beaches in the coastal zone. Elevation data is also one of the most important parameters for modeling inundation. Topobathy LIDAR data is especially valuable due to its accuracy and its seamless transition from land to water. Coastal managers and decision makers use visualization tools that incorporate these elevation models to understand vulnerability, increase resilience, and develop hazard mitigation plans. These are only a few of the many ways that elevation and shoreline data are being used to help keep coastal communities safe and resilient. NOAA Topobathy LIDAR data is a critical component for meeting the challenges of an uncertain future. <laughs>